industry. I wanted to make a quick video about what to expect when you work inside of a funeral home. Now, we already know that there are dead people there. And we also know that there are probably more than one inside when you work inside of a funeral home. If you don't like blood, this may not be for you. I'm used to it, but I just want to throw that out there. You know, is that it is really, really cold in the prep room. You get cold very easily this may not be the gig for you because it's cold to the point to where you sniffle, your nose runs, you shiver. And I mean, not saying that you can't layer your clothing, you know, you're gonna have a lab coat on it. I just want to stress that it is very cold. It's very cold. There are smells. And, it doesn't help. and we know with death, Death comes with smells. Well, this is a variety of smells. And now I'm used to it, but before it was like, I would go home with the stench of death inside of my nostril. I don't want to go into detail, but the embalming process, there are smells. Depending on what clothing people had on or you know, their body leaks with, which creates smells. It's just smelly. Okay. And if you want to find out what it smells like, if you are a highly sensitive person, if you are an empathic person, unless you have your emotions under control, I would reconsider because you're dealing with a lot of emotion. You know, they've lost someone that's near and dear to them. So you have to learn how to be compassionate, how to address the family. You have to learn how to comfort the family and your verbiage has to be on point because there are certain things that you can't say to family members that are mourning. You know, and if that's not something that's for you or you cry a lot, like when I first started, I'm very emotional. I cried a lot. I cried to myself a lot. Um, just because it's another thing is you have to be ready to be in a room full of dead people. Sometimes it's only one body, other times it may be seven, depending on the capacity, the capacity of the room, the prep room. So if you can't take one, you can't take seven. And you will see a lot of things. Cause because people pass away from sickness. If it was a homicide, if it was a suicide, if it was a car wreck, uh, you will see infants, you will see pregnant women. And if you're not able to withstand that, I don't suggest this for you because if you've lived a sheltered life or a naive life, or, you know, if you paint this pretty picture about life, that will change for you when once you decide to work in a funeral home. I'm guaranteed because it's 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 opened my eyes. How about that? Another topic that I want to touch on is you have to be patient. Families are going to bring you a picture and want you to recreate that look on their loved one. Now, sometimes I'm not even gonna lie to you. These pictures are from 1975 and we're in 2021. These pictures will be very dated. So it's up to you to recreate a similar look on their loved one. And when I say dated, I mean like, bouffants, slick backs, um, these are endless, Dolly Parton's. You have to be prepared to recreate these looks that these families want. Now, I'm going to be realistic with them and tell them that there's a possibility that certain things that they request may not be obtainable. Like, it, it, there's a possibility that I cannot achieve that. And you have to just be honest with them. 
Um, there's some families that want their loved one viewed and they've been decomposing for a while. Um, it's been weeks since they've been embalmed. Uh, they're de decapitated. They had a violent death and it's hard to cover up their wounds and things like that, but it can be done with reconstructive art. Um, but just know that there are some things that you're going to come across and you're like, I don't think that this is possible. But do the best that you can because you are the professional and they're looking for you to just kind of bring this overall look together for their loved one. And they don't want to hear, no, I can't show them to the rest of their family. They don't want to hear that. So what we do is we just go in there and do the best that we can. And you know, you might have to redo makeup. You might have to redo hair. You might have to change outfits. You might have to do a lot of things, but the purpose of us in this field is to help families. Or body bags. And if that means you I absolutely hate body bags. I would prefer to walk in the room, you know, with the person covered with the sheet or um, just, you know, their face covered. For me, body bags, you don't know what you get when you open them. Now, I don't open the body bags, but the embalmers that I work with do. And I tend to ask them like, hey, could you not do that while I'm around? You might have to work in the funeral home alone by yourself with just bodies. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sometimes it still messes me up, but it took me a while to get to that point to where I was comfortable. I had to work alone in the funeral home. It was at nighttime. How convenient. And the embalmer that I work with was stuck in traffic. And he was probably really like 45 minutes to an hour away. And I'm gonna be real. I was afraid. Uh, I am very empathic myself, so I feel things. And that's something that I wasn't ready to feel, but you know what? Sometimes we're not ready for a lot of stuff. And if you're interested in doing this, you're gonna have to get used to the smells, being alone, um, the possibility of hearing sounds, which I've asked people in this industry, have you ever had an encounter? And they tell me no. I think they're fine. But they tell me no. Um, and it could just be because they block out that side. You know, they're there for business and business only. Now me, I'm like, did y'all hear that? Did you feel that? Why am I so emotional? Why am I crying? There's a huge you possibility know, that you might see an embalming. Now, when I first saw an embalming, I wasn't ready for it, but I really didn't have a choice because, you know, the embalmer had to do his job and I just so happened to be in the room with him while I had to do mine. It's not for the faint of hearts. If you don't like needles, if you don't like blood, if you don't like fluids and secretions, this isn't for you. <laughs> Cause I've literally seen everything. I've seen everything. So if you can't, watching them suture people or embalm them, cut them. If you don't like blood, this may not be for you either. Um, sometimes people have blood under their fingernails and it is ideal to cleanse their hands and manicure them. A majority of the time when they are brought in, they're already rinsed and cleaned. But sometimes people forget to pay particular attention to under their nail beds and things like that. So if you don't like stuff like that, that's just one of the, the things that you'll have to deal with. Also, um, hair removal. So that it can cause the skin to peel. The skin can chafe, the skin can still get razor burns. So you still have to use shaving creams and you know, soaps, a soapy, watery mixture to remove hair from someone's face. You can't just go on with a dry razor because 
it will cut their skin and they're not gonna bleed because the blood was removed, but it will damage their skin and that can affect the after look, the final look after they put makeup on. And men and women both wear makeup. Some people, if their bodies are viewed within days after death, then they don't necessarily need as much makeup as other people would. But if they have been in there longer than a week, their skin drastically changes. The texture is harder. So say for instance, someone passes away today and their viewings in three days or their services in three days, their skin might still be soft. It will be firm, still be able to move it around. Their cheeks may still be squishy, but you know, my terminology, squishy. Um, <laughs> But other people, when it's been a week or longer, their skin is hard, hard as a rock, cold, ice cold. And you can tell. And I've gotten to the point to where I get people, they may have been shipped in from somewhere else and I just do their makeup. I'm like, how long have they, have they been, you know, waiting to, waiting for their viewing? And it could be a while. And then you may become more than just a mortuary cosmetologist. You will become the embalmer's assistant. So you may help move bodies, dress bodies, um, prepare caskets, dress them. The duties are endless. And I chose to take on that because I want to know more about the industry. I want to know how things work how things function how the circulation of this thing goes you know so whenever they ask me i don't mind helping well that's all i have for the video uh, today if you have any questions comments topics that you like to discuss anything leave a comment below or you can email me at dropdeadgorgeous13 at gmail.com i'm also on tiktok Facebook and Instagram is Miss Mortuary, Miss underscore Mortuary, where you can watch me and my crazy videos and topics. And, or you can just follow me because I, I like followers. You can leave a comment. I like comments, I like questions. You can also watch the other videos that I've created down below. I think I'm getting better at this. This is harder than it looks very hard well if i didn't freak you out too much 